What's good, YouTube? That's what I need to hear. Back again on once again today, people. Today we have some more Pokemon Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon news and information for you guys. The games are out in six days. Six days away. Next Friday they're out, so you guys already know what has begun. The games themselves, information, everything has started leaking. And if you are a part of social media or anything, it's very difficult to stray away from leaks and whatnot. Um, me personally, I don't really care. I'm a grown ass man. I've played oh, dozens of Pokemon games, dozens of games in general. And whether or not the games are spoiled for me, I don't care. I'm still going to play them. I still like Pokemon. Um, so to me, I don't personally care. That's the, that's the, the whole uh, basis behind this video. But I know a lot of people do care about spoilers and whatnot. So if you don't want to be spoiled by anything, we're not talking about anything storyline related in, in today's video, but uh, just information that's come out. Uh, but if you don't want any spoilers or anything, then don't continue watching. You, you watch at your own risk. Don't get mad at me. I'm just letting you know. Because uh, I know there are a group of people out there that don't want to be spoiled. Other people don't care. I'm a part of the, the group. I was going to say the majority. Then I changed my mind to minority. And then I was like, wait. I'm a part of the group of people that doesn't care. So I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to express my opinion on it. And uh, yeah, we're going to go from there. So of course, if you guys are hyped for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and of course, we're going to show you supporters are proud of the Nappy Nation, make sure to like button down below for us, because you already know your supporters really appreciate it. Now, diving into things, the first piece of information that comes up, and I'm sure you guys may have seen these images floating around out there somewhere before. I know a lot of people have already done videos on them and whatnot, but uh, I also had a lot of people asking me uh, what my opinions on this are, and etc, etc, etc. But the first piece of information we have, uh, apparently the original Kahunas are going to stay the same in the game. However, the Elite Four replaces Kahili, the random ass chick <laughs> that they mentioned once in Sun and Moon, uh, the, the flying type Elite Four member, if you guys don't know. Uh, with Ma Ma oh, Mo Lane, my god. With Mo Lane, uh, the guy who gave us the Steel Steelium Z in Sun and Moon, which I always thought was kind of awkward. It was always kind of odd for him to just randomly just like be placed in front of Sophocles. Like, I get their cousins or nephews or whatever but it was always just odd to me that like before I took on that trial Molaine's just like here have this let's fight and you can have this and we just get the Steelium Z for beating his level 24 meta like what it always seemed weird so I like that they actually took um, somewhat of an important character because he went on the island challenge with Kakui so I like that they actually took him and made him an actual trainer now so He's like a young Steven. My boy's gonna have a Metagross. He's gonna smack you up with all four arms. And Maggie Evolve and smack you up with four more arms, goddammit. So, I mean, I think it's exciting. I, I, I kinda hope... I kinda hope that the... Well, it says the Kahuna stayed the same. When I read it just now, I was thinking Kahuna. I was thinking Trial Captain when I read Kahuna. Um, so, that was one thing about Sun and Moon that I wasn't a huge fan of, was how the Kahunas ended up being the Elite Four. I wanted new trainers, new powerful, strong trainers to be the Elite Four, not just rematches of trainers that we've already fought, you know? I don't know, maybe it's a little more traditional that way, Island Challenge, they get to, to, to gauge your progress, see how far you've come, etc, 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 but still... Uh, I don't know, I just would have liked to have something different, something new. So now my question as well is what happened to Kahili? Where did she go? Is she off traveling the world again? Because Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon takes place in an alternate timeline, so maybe she got smacked up somewhere else. Maybe she never became the great golfer that she is. Maybe she never became the great trainer that she is. And Molane completed his island challenge with Kakui and became a great Kahuna. And is now a, a part of the Elite Four. And wasn't, wasn't Hapu a Kahuna? Wasn't Hapu a Kahuna? How come Hapu didn't become... Hmm. If they answer that in Sun and Moon, I don't remember. I was gonna say, Hapu was the Pony Island Kahuna. How come she wasn't invited to be a part of the League 4? Hmm? What's up with that? You probably know why? You wanna know why the game developers probably didn't do it? Game Freak didn't do it? Because the levels that your mons are at when you fight Hapu versus when you fight the Elite 4 are probably way too close, so it'd literally just be the exact same battle all over again. Hmm. Gotta be smarter than the average bear. Moving on to the next uh, topic here. Apparently, there are more items coded into the game that you can use your Mega Keystones in. So we're not bound to a Mega Bracelet or a Mega Pin or this and that, yada, yada, yada. Apparently, apparently, all the items that we can use. I know it's hard to read, but your boy got 6,700,000 vision. Apparently, 
Uh, there is a mega necklace, mega glasses, um, mega stick pin, mega tiara, a mega anklet, and a couple other items. I'm guessing just all the, the mega the, or the keystone holding items that we've seen over the past couple games, like uh, the anchor, the necklace is what um, Archie had, the mega glasses is what Maxie had, the stick pin is what Steven had, so I'm guessing they're finally giving us the chance to use all those and not be bound to a mega ring. Or, or something as simple as that. The flip side to this is it's interesting that they're putting any sort of emphasis on Mega Evolution again because they tried to steer so far away from it, just in general overall. They tried to steer so far away from it with Z crystals and the Z ring and whatnot. Like Mega Mega Evolution was like an afterthought in Sun and Moon, and now it seems like since they're putting all this detail and all this uh, all this extra stuff in with it, it seems like they're giving just a little bit more emphasis on it which I am not upset about at all I would love that I would absolutely love that 100% Z crystals are cool but if they would have never put Z moves in the game I would sleep peacefully at night mega evolution I think is a much better what's the what is what's the what's the how do I want to explain this mega evolution is a much better storyline thought process idea etc 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 I just like mega evolution better you know and that's really surprising because when mega evolution first came out I was very on the fence about it but I actually really really like mega evolution I think I think it just it just fits that's the best way to describe it like it just fits in Pokemon whereas Z moves it's just like it's like Game Freak's just trying to one up itself constantly 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 and it's like what it's just I, I don't know I just wasn't feeling them wasn't feeling them I, I, we could do without them. They're cool, but we could do without them. I'd rather them shift the focus back to Mega Evolution come 8th Gen. And uh, I think with them giving us the customization options like this to put our Mega Keystones in is definitely lit as shit, dog. Next piece of information we have is apparently there are no new Alolan forms, which just honestly takes me by surprise because Alolan forms alongside Z moves, Z crystals, were such a huge presence. They played such a huge role in the introduction and promotion of Sun and Moon. So now that we have Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, we have no new Alolan forms at all? It's it's set to take place in a whole new timeline. A whole new series of events are happening. We don't have any different species in the region. There's no new Alolan forms at all? I don't know. Seems kind of iffy. Seems kind of interesting to me to say the least. It's really, really odd that they just don't have it at all. Especially since we have this return of uh, uh, mega rings or mega keystones or I don't know maybe I'm, I'm putting too much uh, I'm, I'm investing too much into the, the customization option of the mega keystone but before in Sun and Moon if you remember all they did was they just modified our Z ring to make it so they can hold the keystone as well so literally we're, it's like a 180 we're going from mega rings and mega keystones being an afterthought to them actually being something holding some sort of relevance in this game uh, but it sucks there's no new Alolan forms um, it's kind of a double-edged sword. For whatever reason, Game Freak is afraid to hit the big 1000 with the Pokédex, so that's why they made Alolan Forms for Sun and Moon, so that they could give us a new generation and give us like 30 new Mons and then like 30 Alolan Forms, where they technically don't add to the Pokédex. So, I don't know. Alolan Forms are cool, they're interesting. Um, I never saw them really being much of anything outside of Alola, outside of Sun and Moon. Like, when it comes to 8th gen, I don't think Alolan forms are going to hold any precedence at all. If even being available in the game, who knows? It would be weird if they didn't, but I don't know. It just seems like such a specific, such a region-specific thing. I can't really see them continuing with the Alolan form strategy, which is maybe why they did this. Maybe this is their way of, like, straying away from it so that by the time uh, we play Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon for the next year and the next games are announced, we forget all about Alolan forms. It's not even a thing anymore. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Apparently, there are also a lot of new items, including colored petals. Colored petals are apparently, like, the very specific, like, the specifically new, interesting, intriguing thing that's going on in here. We have the Sol Solganium Z, Jesus Christ, Lunalium Z, Ultra Necrosium Z, Ultra Necrosium Z, so not just a Necrosium Z, but an Ultra Necrosium Z. Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. A Mimic Kium Z, a Lycanium Z, a Commonium Z, a Z Power Ring, Pink Petal, Orange Petal, Blue Petal, Red Petal, Green Petal, Yellow Petal, Purple Petal, and a Rainbow Flower. Hmm. Hmm. If I'm not mistaken, those are the colors of the rainbow. We have a Rainbow Flower as well to go with it. Huh. First thing that comes to mind is the the Book of Leaves from Insurgents for the Delta Snorlax. <laughs> So, I mean, obviously the petals, the petals are going to change something. They wouldn't give us this many. Uh, I would like to liken it to Arceus's plates, perhaps, maybe to draw a parallel. It's, uh, it doesn't make much sense what the rainbow flower would do, because there's nothing really you can compare that to for Arceus, but it's just interesting that we have all these different types of petals. Does it change the type that a Pokemon has? Do we have a new legendary Pokemon that we haven't found out about yet? That's going to be, that's going to change its typing based upon these petals. The only other flower mod we have is Shaman with the Gracedia flower, which I always thought should have been pronounced Gracedia. I don't know, that's just me. But in the movie, they say Gracedia, and I'm like, do you realize how dumb you sound, dog? Just Gracedia rolls with the tongue so much better. Anyways, we have the Surge badge, which is Buku interesting, because that picture that we have with, um, what's his name? Why is it escaping me now? I know that uh, Ryuki, or whatever his name is, the red-haired dude that was in Surge's gym, everyone was spazzing out over. Apparently, we have the option to get the Surge badge. I feel like it's going to have something to do with an Ultra Wormhole. We're going to go through an Ultra Wormhole, either with him or to meet him there or something, and we're going to end up in Surge's gym, which is going to be an interesting and very specific throwback, but I don't know. It just seems really interesting that we have just the Surge badge listed. No other badges, nothing, just the Surge badge. Like, when I say no other badges, I mean, like, not just from Kanto, just no other badges, period. It's, we're doing an island trial, so why are we getting just this one badge in Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon? We have the end Solarizer and the end Lunarizer. Uh, those, apparently, I'm guessing, are is what's going to make Necrozma turn into its Duskmane and Dawn Wings form. It's kind of like... Um, you need the DNA splitters to get black and white here. So I'm guessing that's what those are. We have a something normally in Z. The, the font is all fucked up on that. A left Pokeball. And then we have a whole bunch of Roto items. A Roto Hatch, Roto Bargain, Roto Prize Money, Roto EXP Points, Roto Friendship, Roto Counter, Roto Stealth, Roto HP Restore, Roto PP Restore, Roto Boost, and Roto Catch. Woo! Say all that ten times fast. Uh, I've pretty much already been decided that this is like uh, O Powers being put back in the game. So obviously all of these are just going to be uh, things that work with the Rotom decks to get you quick hatch, uh, more prize money, more experience points, points, better friendship on your mons, HP restore when you're away from Pokemon Center, PP restore when you're away from a Pokemon Center. So all you shiny hunters out there, I remember I used to use the PP O powers to restore O powers on Slurp the Gudra when we were shiny hunting in Alpha Sapphire. So I mean it's lit, I, like, I, I never saw a reason why they got rid of O powers. You know, it didn't hurt the game at all, so why fuck with it? If it's not broken, why fix it? Doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. So now we get into the real nitty gritty of the leaks. The the where we're off of items, we're off of little shit like this. We have actual Pokemon information. There's apparently a new mythical Pokemon named Zorora or Zeraora, or however you want to pronounce it, and it is a pure electric type. And has its own move called Plasma Fists, or uh, yeah, yeah, the user attacks with electrically charged fists. This move changes all normal type moves to electric. So that's why it's a question of like, does, is it one of those things that's like an effect afterwards? Kind of like how Worry Seed changes your ability, or a Simple Beam changes your ability. So it's it's interesting in that sense how uh, it works like that. Apparently, he's supposed to be a fast physical attacker. He's a glass cannon uh, through and through. He looks like a fucking Digimon, if I'm being serious with you. He looks like a goddamn Digimon, and I don't know how to feel about it. We have his shiny as well, paired up. Uh, I don't know all the specifics about shiny Pokemon in Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. I've seen a lot of stuff on Twitter. Um, I follow a lot of shiny hunters, and they're talking about, like, apparently not all the legends are shiny locked. Apparently, um, every every legend but uh, Sogaleo, Lunala, and Akrozma, and, like, Zygarde or something like that is, is, uh, isn't is shiny locked, so you can shiny hunt all of them or something. I don't know, uh, but this new little dude, aside from the fact he looks like a Digimon, it's kind of like how I feel like with a lot of Mons, like Mimikyu and whatnot, like, I don't like him, 
but I don't hate him. He's kind of just there. I, I really want to see him in game and see how he works. Uh, but we have the model for the new mythical Pokemon Zeraora. Zeraora, 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 Zeraora. Yo, what if Ryuki has Zeraora, or however you pronounce it, and he's in this timeline in Surge's gym? Since he's a pure electric type mon, and we fight him and get the Surge badge. And that's how we see Zeraora, 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 Zeraora. Up next, we have honestly some unbelievable information, I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's unbelievable in the sense of like how many people called it. I think I called bullshit when I first heard it, but apparently UB Adhesive gets an evolution. I don't, know if, I don't know if you guys heard this or not, but when UB Adhesive was first announced, there are a lot of people that are like, it's too small to be an Ultra Beast. It has to evolve. It has to have an evolution. And even then when I heard that, I was like, that's dumb as fuck, dog. We have Kartana. We have tiny Ultra Beasts all, all, already. So it's like, why does it have to evolve? I actually kind of like the fact that it was just this little tiny fuck him up. You know, he was just going to go around and just fuck shit up. He was cool. But apparently we now have an evolution. We have the sprites for UB Adhesive and its evolution, Nagan Nadel. Nagan Nadel, or however you want to pronounce it. Uh, apparently it evolves from UB Adhesive and is a fast special attacker. So we had Zeraor, who is a fast physical attacker. Now we have uh, Naga Nadel, who's a fast special attacker. And apparently it's Poison Dragon. And when I first heard it, I was like, oh shit, this is lit. And then I realized we had Dragology already, so it's not our first Poison Dragon. But still, uh, it's a fast special attacker. It's Poison Dragon. And I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of dope. I mean, I know it said we had no Alolan forms, but I guess Beedrill had to show up a shot anyways. We got Alolan Beedrill here, so very interesting to say the least. Very interesting to say the least. We have our first Ultra Beast that evolves. Actually, take that back. We have uh, Cosmog into Cosmium into Solgaleo or Lunala. So they were technically Ultra Beast that could evolve and Legends that could evolve as well. But... Now, apparently, like, from the strictly just uh, the Ultra Beast pool, UB Adhesive evolved into Naga Nadel. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Alright, so now time for the big dog himself. Let's talk about Necrozma. So, in the item list earlier, we saw Ultra Necrozmium Z. And it's not an accident. It's not a misprint. I didn't realize I was going to say that before I talked about this. I was trying to say the best for last, you know what I mean? Uh, but apparently... Necrozma goes through a whole lot in this game. Apparently Game Freak learned from the mistakes with Zygarde, and they did not miss out on the third legend in this game. So Necrozma has two different forms, being the Dusk Mane and Dawn Wings form. And then it has something else called an Ultra Burst. We haven't seen an Ultra Burst before. It's kind of like a Mega Evolution, but an Ultra Burst changes its form from the Dusk Mane and Dawn Wings form into its final form. And its stats are terrifying. In the original game, it only had, what, like, base 600 stats or something like that? That's why everyone was like, oh, they gotta do something with it. But apparently in this game, it's like 700 plus or something. Like, it shits on Arceus, apparently. It's kinda crazy. I think I saw it somewhere. Uh, the base stats were like 160-something for attack and special attack. And like 129 for speed or something around there. It's redonkulous. But apparently it has some final form that it achieves through Ultra Burst. So you gotta get uh, Necrozma and Solgaleo Lunala, in addition to the End Solarizer and Luna Lunarizer, and fuse them together to get Duskmane or Dawn Wings Necrozma. And then on top of that, you can Ultra Burst into Necrozma's final form, which is base stats are dumb high. But not only is he broken then. Harkening back to where I started this conversation with the Ultra Necrozmium Z. He's got his own Z move that's called Light That Burns the Sky. So, it's like, it's like, like I said before, Pokemon's constantly, Game Freak's constantly trying to outdo themselves. And I feel like you don't have to do that. It's not necessary. Now, don't get me wrong. I think this is dope. It looks amazing. This nigga is huge on the screen. Humongous on the screen. But... It's like you had dragons that were running everywhere in 5th gen. So you nerfed them in 6th gen by introducing a whole new typing. Then on top of that, we have Mega Evolution, which comes through and stomps all over the game. So how do we beat Mega Evolution? How do we one-up ourselves with Mega Evolution? Z-Crystals. We have moves that are so strong, they can Oko Mega Evolutions. And now it's like, how do we, how do we beat that? How do we, how do we go even further? Let's get 
two legends, fuse them together, let them mega evolve, and give them a Z move. <laughs> It's like, when is enough enough? Like, oh my god, can we just hard reset with the Switch games? Go back to Kanto and start all over, dog. I'm down for it. Either way, Necrozma's final form is badass. And check this out. It is apparently Psychic Dragon, which is our first Psychic Dragon type. Because, I mean, that's how Game Freak works. Anytime you want to make something better, slap that Dragon type in on it. Anytime something Mega Evolves or Ultra Burst in this sense, slap that Dragon type in on it. Slap it on there with the might of Zeus. <laughs> It's just, it's crazy, it's crazy. It's, this mod is absolutely insane. Insane to say the least. I'm super duper hyped, I'm super duper excited for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Uh, aside from uh, Shinies for UB, uh, what's the, the UB Wall and uh, the UB Burst, uh, I think that's all the new information that's come out as of right now. Oh, and apparently Ash is gonna be in the game as well. Uh, there's been some information leaked that says that Ash is actually like the data form is coded into the game A lot of people are saying that it's probably just gonna be for like the Ash Pikachu event or something like that's how you're gonna get it Which I guess I again. I'm building theories off of everything. I'm saying in this video. We have The surge badge we have already seen us in Surge's gym I feel like we're gonna go through an ultra wormhole to get to Surge's gym. We're gonna see Ash while he's there I don't know. I don't know. There's just a lot that's gonna go down and I'm very, very interested to say the least. So let us know what you guys think about all the leaks in today's video. Uh, again, I told you there was a spoiler warning from the jump. Don't watch the video if you ain't trying to get spoiled. But let us know what you guys think. The games are six days away. I'm very, very excited. I'm very, very happy for everything that is, that is coming. I'm, I'm glad that a lot of people have changed their minds and their attitudes about Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. When they first announced it, everyone was so upset. It wasn't Diamond and Pearl. And now that we have all this new information, it's like... 180 everyone's all hyped and happy again so i'm hyped i'm happy i'm excited let me know what you guys think and i will catch you guys next time until then we are out of five